everybody, this is Jewelry Etc. My name is Laura and today I'm going to talk a little bit about how to tell if jewelry that you're looking at and considering for purchase is fine jewelry at a glance. There's lots of tricks you can do once you bring the piece home to determine if it's real or not. And there's like the mug test. You can scrape gold jewelry across an unglazed part of a mug and the magnet. Gold is not attracted to magnets. Silver is sometimes, gold should not be. But I'm guessing when you go to a yard sale, you probably don't wanna be like pulling your magnet out of your pocket or scratching someone else's jewelry across a mug. So how can you tell just looking at some jewelry at a glance if it's fine jewelry or not? For resale purposes, we're generally going for the stuff that's gonna give us a bigger bang for our buck. Um, I will say, disclaimer, costume jewelry is not always cheap. There are a lot of pieces that go for a good chunk of change. But let's jump into my kind of rules, as it were, for spotting fine jewelry. Rule number one, and this is the most important rule that there is, in my humble opinion, <laughs> and that's identifying the metal of the piece of jewelry you are looking at. On necklaces, a lot of times this is going to be on the clasp itself or maybe near the clasp. There might be like a little hang, hang tag down that's got the marking on it of what it is. In rings, it's actually on the inside of the band. Educate yourself on marks. Look this stuff up before you get out there and go shop so you know what you're looking for. Because there's a lot of jewelry that comes, you know, especially like here in the US, we have a different marking system than they do in European countries. And so sometimes you'll see something like 585 and you have no idea what that is because that's not 10K or 14K or 925. It's a totally different number. So look up those numbers and familiarize yourself with them so that you're not confused when you go to practice this stuff to try to get nicer jewelry. This piece here says 925. You know what, I'm gonna get back to him. Let's talk about this one. This one, this is a fantastic example of crappy jewelry. <laughs> it, is, it is all fake. It is fake from the top down. The first indication though, is that it's unmarked on the inside and you can see this looks like a more modern piece. So some of the really old pieces are going to be exceptions to all of these rules. Things get pretty murky the further you go back on your jewelry. There's just, so many factors that I'm going to talk about that just do not apply. For example, the markings. If you find a really old piece, it might not have any markings on it at all. So we'll have to look for some other indications. But this one is unmarked. And you know, let's kind of segue. We'll just segue right here into tip number two. Look at the metal itself. So even if it is marked, you need to look at the actual piece. So as you can see on this piece, there is some wear and the plating is coming off around the gallery that's holding the stone in place, actually on both sides. Hopefully you can see that okay in the camera. And this is why I wanted to talk about this ring here, another fake, fakey through and through, because even though on the inside of the band it's marked 925, when you inspect the band, you'll see that there's actually copper shining through where it's been scuffed. And if this was actual silver, that would not be happening. So take a look at the metal and see if any of that is, you know, plating just coming off. You should not be seeing a copper color at all. Tarnish pieces, and this is one right here, it's just kind of looks more like dirty maybe, kind of like a gunmetal kind of color. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's kind of consistent over the whole piece. You're not just gonna find one spot where it's very drastically like silver and then bam, copper. No, that's bad, that's bad metal, that is not silver. This one is just tarnished all the way and even on the inside too. It's just a natural thing that happens with silver. Polish it or don't polish it, it's all your preference and how you feel about silver jewelry. I personally like to polish it, but you know. This one's not because it's for sale. And some people won't even touch pieces that are bright silver. They hate it, they love the tarnishing. So anyhow, it's all up to our preference, right? The heart wants what it wants. All right, enough about tarnish and chip plates. So look look for the chip, 
chip plates. The plating, there we go, that's why I said plate. The plating, look at the plating, see if it's worn off in any spots. All right, the next tip, look at the prongs. So this here is a brooch that I picked up at a secondhand store. And maybe at a glance you can't really tell if those are real sapphires and perhaps aquamarine or topaz. But my first indication glancing at this piece is the prongs. The prongs look cheap to me. If they don't look cheap to you, just the way they look is kind of, they're kind of like claw-like, if you will. They're very pointed. And I think the reason that they do this, and correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, because I've never created costume jewelry before, but I believe what they do is they like set a mold for the piece. They create the metal mold first, then they set the stones into it and then like fold the prongs over it. I mean, this, this is kind of, you know, I wonder if I can, yeah, I can bend <laughs> those prongs pretty easily. I'm not going to be able to just very easily bend prongs on a nicer piece of jewelry like this one, for example. So on this, even though the prongs are somewhat pointed, you can tell the quality of the prong work is better, all around better. And it's just something maybe over time that you will notice as you're looking at more and more pieces of jewelry. You'll be able to see it right away if it's in cheap metal or not. One more thing I wanted to mention about the prongs before we move on is sometimes you'll see like in this costume piece here, the prongs are there, they're smoothed out, they look okay, but they're not even touching the gemstone. Prongs should be laid right snug up against the gem gemstone, protecting the edges of it and holding it into the piece. If they're not overlapping the gemstone whatsoever, you are looking at a lower quality piece. Next tip, and we'll pick up this piece again to talk about this, is look on the back. If your gemstones are encased in the metal, they are probably not real. And the reason they do this is because these little glass rhinestone pieces, they don't have enough light refraction to give it the sparkle that we like to see all that flash. At least, I, I mean, that's, that's, sometimes a big piece of why of the reason of why I pick certain pieces I'm just all sorts of tongue twisted tonight because I like the sparkle so the reason they put the silver and like highly reflective metals behind the gemstones or the faux gemstones is so that you have more sparkle coming through the top there's another example of that here and if you look at the side you can see that it's open and it's even open underneath. However, on closer inspection, there is a coating on the underside, like a metallic coating to help give that sparkle. So sometimes, even if you do see that it's open underneath, look a little closer at that stone because if there's a coating on it, you can see that it isn't the same clarity all the way through top to bottom. Chances are you're looking at a fake. All right, the next thing I wanted to talk about really quick are dead stones and pieces. So let's say you have this piece of jewelry, it's unmarked, it looks like it's a white metal of some sort, maybe white gold, maybe platinum if you're really lucky, and there are just gemstones encrusted all over the piece. Well, here is an example of a watch I purchased on a whim, hoping it had value, knowing nothing about watches. I knew it was fake but I was hoping it was valuable. I still haven't found out about this watch, so if this strikes any chord in you, please leave me a comment and let me know if this is anything special. But as you can see, there's spots on this watch that kind of look like stones are missing, but on closer inspection, they are there, but it's darkened behind the stone. So when you look down at it, it looks like the stone is blackened, and that is what are known as dead stones. So dead stones happen with artificial stones. Just as a natural part of the aging process, you see this a lot with vintage pieces. And apparently you can clean it. I've never tried. And this one, I'm afraid to submerge it into anything since it's a watch and I don't want to screw anything up with a liquid. But anyway. So yeah, if you see a piece and there are some darkened stones, you see dead stones, you're probably looking at artificial gemstones. 
The last thing I just wanted to talk about really quickly is just inspecting the piece for the quality of the metalwork. If it's a precious metal and precious gemstones, usually the person who's creating that piece of jewelry is going to be paying attention to detail on finishing that piece. Is the metalwork looking pretty good and pretty symmetrical and consistent in quality? Then you may have a higher end piece or you have a fakey fake like this guy here. So let's take a really quick look at this guy. At a glance, I mean, it's marked 925, it had these stones. We know because I showed you earlier that the plating is coming off, but let's say the plating was fine and you're still looking this over. You can see there are some inconsistencies in this metalwork. There is, on this side, in between this open work here next to the mill grain, there's like little pieces of metal that are coming up into what should probably be open. And it's actually coming up a little higher on one side than it is on the other. So right there, it's inconsistent. But when you turn it to the other side, it's actually completely open on both sides. So it's just kind of like a weird flaw that you wouldn't find in a quality piece. The other thing about this piece, another indicator that it's fake, is the under gallery. You'll see the gemstones enclosed, like we talked about earlier. So bad metalwork, enclosed gemstone, scraped off plating, showing copper. This thing is screaming fake. Thanks for hanging there with me, guys. That's all I have for you on my tips. Hopefully you found something helpful or educational. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Leave a comment below if you have your own tip about how you spot fake jewelry or spot the real stuff. It would be really great for all of us to learn from you too. So leave a comment. That is it for this one. Thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye y'all.